Do you want to learn how to create a JavaScript chatbot web application? Hi, my name is Mustafa Alawi. I'm a software developer and entrepreneur with several years of experience. I have taught more than 3,000 students online and offline several courses in web development, Android development, software development, and entrepreneurship. I have also worked as a consultant on different projects helping local businesses. In this course, you will learn the idea behind chatbots and how they work. You will be taught how to create four different chatbot web applications in vanilla JavaScript. Each of these apps will serve a specific goal. The first app will be a simple free chatbot that responds to users' questions and statements. The second web app is going to be a data collection chatbot web application. Then I'll move on to create a personal assistant chatbot web application. The last app is going to be a restaurant ordering system where the user will be able to choose their meals from the restaurant's menu. By the end of this course, you will have a complete understanding of how chatbots work and you will be able to create your own chatbot web application. I hope you get the best out of this course and I'm looking forward to seeing you in this course. Let me start off by defining exactly what you are going to learn in this course and the programming languages and tools that will be used. In this course, you will learn how to create four different chatbot web applications using vanilla JavaScript. These applications will be front-end web applications meaning that they will not depend on a server or database to get data and to respond to users. All the logic will be done in the front end. So there are no back end programming languages used in this course. Obviously, the programming language that is going to be used is pure JavaScript, meaning that there are no external libraries or frameworks used in this course. Finally, the user interface is created with the help of Bootstrap. Before doing anything, you need to make sure you understand the definition of a chatbot. Because knowing the definition will make you perform better in terms of creating the code. So I have put this definition of chatbots. A chatbot is a piece of software that is able to respond to users as if it were a human being. So it's not a human being, but we are trying to make it very smart so that it responds to users as if it were a human being. And what we can infer from this definition is that the more advanced the chatbot is, the better experience users will have. And I wanted to point out that there is always a room for improvement when it comes to chatbot applications. Because we are trying to simulate a brain of a human being, which is very complicated and very difficult. And you need also to know that every effort you put in your code pays off. So you can always improve your chatbots. In this course, I'm going to teach you how to create four different chatbot applications. The first application is going to be a free conversation with a chatbot, just like Siri in iOS devices and Google Assistant in Android devices, you will be able to start a conversation with the chatbot and the chatbot will respond depending upon what you typed. The second type is going to be a data collection system. So it's going to, the chatbot is going to send the user questions and each, each time the user answers, the chatbot is going to take that answer and store it so that you can collect data. So this is useful in case you want to have a survey system. So you don't, you don't have to have real people to collect data from users. You can use a chatbot. The third type is going to be a personal assistant. So basically the chatbot is going to display options to the user such as the weather, the sports, the news, and then it's going to ask the user to select one of them. And once the user selects one of them, the chatbot is going to display 
the weather or the news or the sports or help the user get these things. The fourth type is going to be a business, specifically a restaurant order system. So the chatbot is going to display the menu to the user and it's going to ask the user to select his or her meals. And then after that, it's going to display a link so that the user can check out and pay and the meals will be delivered to the user. So these are the four chatbot applications that I'm going to teach you how to create in this course. Welcome back. The IDE that I'm going to be using is Visual Studio. You can use whatever IDE that you are comfortable with or any text editor. And as you can see, this is the Visual Studio and it has so many powerful features, therefore I'm going to be using it. So let's start by creating the project folder. So in the desktop, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it chatbot. And I'm going to open it in Visual Studio. You can simply just drag and drop it and it's going to open the folder in Visual Studio. Then we can start uh, working inside this folder. So the first thing that I'm going to do inside our project is that I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name it index.html which is going to contain all the HTML code and I'm going to also create another folder JS for JavaScript which is going to contain any JavaScript file. And inside the index.html I'm going to create the basic skeleton which is just simple HTML code. And I'm going to change the title to chatbot. Welcome back. So inside our project I'm going to also create another folder for the CSS which is going to contain any CSS file that we want and I will also be using Bootstrap therefore I need to add Bootstrap to our project. So you can simply just go to getbootstrap.com and click on get started and you have two choices either adding the CDN adding the links to your project the CSS as well as the JS for Bootstrap or you can simply go back and download it and after you download it you add it to your project so you would just click on download and click here download and it's going to download the files that you need and you can add them to your project or you can just use the CDN so I'm gonna use the links which is easier for now you just you just need to copy the CSS and add it just in the uh, before the end of the head tag paste it here and you need also to paste the JavaScript these three scripts just click on this copy and then just before the end of the uh, body tag here you would paste these three lines these three scripts and now we have Bootstrap added to our project. Welcome back. So now that we have added Bootstrap to our project, we can start adding the HTML code so that we have the skeleton of our project. So first of all, what I'm going to do inside the body is that I am going to add a dev, which is going to be the container that will hold everything. And this dev, I'm going to give it a class of equals to container which is a well-known class in bootstrap and then inside this div I'm gonna also add h1 tag which is just going to display awesome chat but app or whatever you want to display and I'm gonna also give it a class of equals to text center which is going to obviously center the text and this is also a bootstrap class which is going to center the text and this is just the first things that I'm gonna um, do just to test if bootstrap works or not so let's now save and test 
and in order to test it's very simple you can open just you can open the uh, index.html in your browser so I'm going to I'm going to just copy the path copy path and, and then go to your browser and you can simply just paste the path and hit enter and as you can see we have this uh, h1 tag if we just use the inspect and then open the element or elements you will find inside inside the body you will find that we have a div which is which uh, is the container and it has the container class and as you can see this is the class and you can check the properties of that class it has uh, this uh, margin and the padding as well so it's a great class in bootstrap and also as you can see the text is centered in the h1 tag which means that bootstrap is working fine welcome back the next thing that i'm going to do is that i'm going to create the chat heading which is just an image of the chatbot and also kind of the username or some information that it's online something like that and I'm going to show you what I mean by going to bootstrap because I'm going to use a bootstrap class called media and as you can see this is what we need is just an image and the name of the person of course it's going to be a, a chat bot so it's not a person so I'm going to just copy this part and in our project project I'm going to add it and edit few things let's copy it and get back to our project so in our project just below the h1 what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paste it and I'm going to fix few things firstly what I need to do is that I'm going to add a class instead of this to the image which is the rounded circle which is going to display the image inside a circle and then I'm going to also use the float left because I want the image to always be on the left side and I'm going to also use the image thumbnail because obviously I just want to display a thumbnail not the uh, full size image and I'm going to also use the width because we don't know how big the image is that we are going to get so we need to make sure that it has a specific uh, width so I'm gonna make it 75 if you want to make it let's say 100 it's up to you but I'm gonna use for now 75 and uh, test and see if that uh, works well or not for the H5 what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna remove this class and instead I'm gonna just use a style and I'm gonna just add a margin margin of 10 and instead of this text I'm gonna remove this text a um, span we need a span to display that this um, this uh, chat uh, bot is online so I'm gonna remove this and instead I'm gonna add here span span and then inside it I'm gonna first use a style equals to margin left and it's going to be 10 and inside it I'm gonna just display just display online and of course this should be let's say chatbot and that's it let's now uh, test and see how this looks like and if I refresh as you can see we have the this the chatbot and the online the online word indicating that the, it's online and also the image let's add an image so that we see how it's going to look like so I already have this image I'm gonna paste it inside the source you're free to use whatever uh, whichever image you want in uh, you can just get an image uh, from the internet or you can um, add an image in your uh, project and display it in the source so I have this image a link I'm gonna just add it and let's test again refresh and as you can see now it looks perfect now we have this uh, kind of avatar and the uh, chatbot word indicating that this person that I'm talking to 
is a chatbot and it's uh, currently online welcome back now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create the container that obviously will contain messages between me and the chatbot so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go back to our project and just below the media what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a dev which is going to hold all messages between me and the chatbot first I'm gonna give it an ID of container here container and this ID is very very important because we will be using it to display messages to send messages between me and the chatbot so it's very very important and then the classes that I'm gonna use class equals to first I'm gonna also use the container class and I'm gonna also use the border class and the overflow auto because this class is very important because we want to display a scroll so that when messages between me and the chatbot are too many we need a way to scroll and whenever the chatbot sends me a message or uh, whenever I send uh, it a message we want to get to the last message message therefore we need to add a scroll and the over the uh, overflow auto will accomplish that so this class is very very important you need to add it and later I'm gonna show you if I remove it what's going to happen finally I'm gonna add a height of only 500 why because I just want the height of the uh, of the container to be only somehow less than the full screen we want it to have a specific height from here until here something like that so this is the container now inside the container what we need to add is the design for the messages that I'm gonna get from the chatbot and I'm gonna quickly describe how the message design is going to be the messages that I'm going to receive from the chatbot will be displayed on the left side meaning that they will be displayed here whereas the messages that I'm going to send to the chatbot will be displayed on the right side and the, the message uh, itself will only take 50% of the screen so it's like this and my messages will also take 50% of the screen so it will be on the right side so let's start working on them and uh, so that things become clear firstly I'm gonna inside the container I'm gonna create another dev and before I work on it I'm gonna just add a comment so that you understand it here chat but message design and here we can say messages container so this div will have a class first a class of width only 50 we want the width to be only 50 and we also need float left we want the messages to be displayed on the left side and let's also add some shadow to the to the box that will display the message and this will display an amazing shadow and will make the uh, message look perfect and also I'm gonna add a style and it will only be just a simple style to make things uh, look much better I'm gonna use just a margin of 10 and also a padding of 5 and of course these are optional you can add them or you can play with them uh, depending upon how you want the design to look like and now we are done with the with the uh, dev inside the dev we need two spans the first span will display the the username which is just going to be chat nothing more and the second span will display the message itself that I will be receiving from the chatbot and I'm gonna also add some design style equals to margin of top of just 10 and uh, also padding padding of also 10 
and this margin and padding will just add some uh, space so that uh, messages don't be close to one another we want some space so this will make things look much better and inside this panel let's just add a dummy message how are you let's now save and see how this is going to look like so in the browser as you can see now this is the message and this is how it's going to look like just amazing but for the height of the the container we have a problem it should be inside a style here style i forgot to add the style now if i if now i again refresh it should look much better as you can see now this is the uh, this is the height of this of this uh, container the height will always be the same no matter how many messages we have here inside and if we have too many messages we already have the overflow of uh, auto which is going to add the scroll bar on the um, right side so we can scroll and see the latest messages now let's uh, work on the messages that i am going to send to the chatbot actually there is nothing to work on what we need to do is just copy this design and only change one thing and you probably guessed it which is the float left to we need to change it to float right that's it and of course the uh, username here we can say you which is me and here inside we can add a dummy message any dummy message great and I'm gonna also add just a comment quick comment here user message design and make sure that this margin is here px don't forget to add the px and now if we save and refresh as you can see now my messages will be displayed on the right side whereas the messages sent by the chatbot will be displayed on the uh, left side so mine on the right uh, it's on the left and if we just change the size let's change the size of the window as you can see it's responsive meaning that no matter how the screen size is it will be displayed on the right side my messages and the messages received from the chatbot will be displayed on the left so this is amazing welcome back so let's now add too many messages and see how the design is going to look like suppose that the chatbot sent me many messages so I'm gonna just paste the messages here many many messages so that the messages are more than the container can show and see if there will be a scroll or not let's also copy some messages from this from my messages and paste them so as you can see many many messages and after I add all of these messages let's now save and go back to the browser and see how this is going to look like so as you can see after I refresh there are too many messages sent from the chatbot and from me as well but where are my messages they are inside the container but I can scroll as you can see on the right side there is a bar here where I can scroll and see my messages or any messages that the chatbot will will be sending me later so this is the importance of having a scroll uh, here on the right side but if we remove let's remove the uh, the class the overflow auto if I remove it and refresh as you can see now there will be these messages will be displayed outside and the design is terrible and uh, if there are many messages other messages they will not be displayed because they are because the uh, screen can't hold uh, all of these messages so this is the importance of, of using this uh, overflow auto class and of course we need to remove all of these messages they are no longer necessary I was just showing you the importance of using this class and I'm going to remove also all of these messages only leave one message from uh, from the chatbot and a message that I uh, sent 
Welcome back. Now we need to add an input and a button so that I can send messages to the chatbot. So we need to add the HTML code as well as the CSS code so that we have here an input as well as a button. And if we go to our project, just below the container, the container of course of the uh, messages, there are two containers, remember, there is a the main container, this container, which is the main, and there is the container for the messages. Just outside the messages container, I'm going to create another dev, which is going to have the input as well as the button. And this class, this dev will have a class, a bootstrap class called input group. And inside it, I will have an input, which is going to let the user type the message. And the um, ID will be text box, or whatever ID you want. And the ID is very important because this ID will be used in order to get the message and send it to the chatbot. And then we have also the type. The type should be obviously text. And we, hold, we also have the class. The class is very important. I'm going to use the... Uh, a bootstrap class called form control. So this is for the input. The next thing is the button. And I'm going to use a dev, and inside that dev I will have the button. And this dev will have a class called input group append, which is also a, a bootstrap class that will add the button just next to the input. And then we have the button, here, button. And the button, of course, very important. It will also have an ID equals to send, send button. Send button. And also we will have the, um, the class. The class is very important. The class is just a, um, a uh, bootstrap class called btn and then btn primary. And there are many classes in Bootstrap. You can choose whatever, whichever you want. And also the type should be type here equals to button. And finally, inside the button, it, it's going to say send. Let's now save all of this and go to the browser and see how this is going to look like. So in the browser now, if I refresh, as you can see now, we have this input and the button and they look awesome. If I change the size, as you can see the input and the button both are responsive and of course the user will be able to type and send. Welcome back! So now that we are pretty much done with the design, unless you want to add or tweak some designs here and add some uh, colors or something, we need to add the JavaScript that will make our application functional. So what I'm going to do first is that we need to add a script inside our HTML. Or in other words, we need a reference. So what I'm going to do is that just before the end of the um, body tag, I'm going to create, I'm going to make a reference to our script, to our main script. Here, script. And the source of that script will be equal to the script that we will be creating inside the JS file or folder. So here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to name it main.js. And this is of course, this, this is not going to work because the main.js must be inside the JS. So we need to add first the name of the folder which is JS and then slash and then main.js. And of course we need to create this file. So inside the JS folder, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to name it main.js and then hit enter and the main.js now is inside the JS folder. So make sure that you add the uh, correct location of your main JavaScript file in the source of the script in the uh, HTML. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So this is very, very important. You need to make sure that this is correct. 
So now that we have the main.js file, what we need to do is that we need to make references to these items. And what I mean by these items, the first, the container, the send button, and the input. Because these are the most important three things. We need to get the message, and we need to send the message, and we need to display the message. And in order to accomplish that, we need references to these elements. So I'm going to go to the main.js, and inside it, I'm going to start by creating these references. Or I'm going to add here a comment, elements. And then, first I'm going to make var, and then send button equals to document dot get element by id and the id of that element remember the id of the send button was let's go back and check it was send button and i like to keep every, everything consistent so for example here the class is called send btn with a capital b with a camel case here and the name of the variable is send btn so make, sh make sure that everything is consistent so that you, then, you don't get er errors and avoid as many errors as you can. This is the first element. The second element is the input. The input had an ID of text box. So here we can say var text box equals to document dot get element by ID and then inside it text box and finally we need a reference to the container the container not the main container but the container for messages and the container for messages was this one was this one this dev and it has an ID of container in, no, in order to avoid errors what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna name it chat container with capital C here instead of just container because we already have because we already have a class in Bootstrap called container and we need to avoid that. I'm gonna just name it chat container. And I'm gonna go back to the main.js and I'm gonna create this chat container document dot get element by ID and again chat container. And now we have reference to all of these elements. Welcome back. So now that we have references to the most important elements and we have the design ready, we can start working on the sending the message. And we need to get the message that the user will type here and send it to the chatbot. In other words, we need to get it and display it here. And in order to accomplish that, we need to add event listener to the button, to this send button. So that once the user clicks on the send, it's going to get this message and display it here. And of course, send it to the chatbot in the JavaScript code so that we respond accordingly. So what I'm going to do is that in our main.js, I'm going to use the send button and then dot add event listener. And this is the way you can add event listener to the button, to this button. And obviously the event that I'm going to be using is the click event and the callback function here we have a callback function is going to be just a function that will be executed once the user clicks on the button. And once the user clicks on the button what we need to do is that we need to get the text. We need to get this text. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just use the text box text box dot value we need to get the value and then store it here in a variable let message text equals to text box dot value then what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create another function here another function called function send message and this function is going to take a parameter to have a parameter called message text and I'm gonna call this function from inside the callback so here I'm gonna call it send message and I'm gonna pass the message text 
That way our code will be more organized than just typing everything inside the callback function here. So now our code will be more organized. So once we call the send message and pass the message text, what we need to do is that we need to create a dev. Why? Because we want to create this dev. Remember the dev, the uh, user dev, which is just a dev that will display the message. And in order to accomplish that, it's very simple. We create a dev using JavaScript. So here we just create a variable called message element, and it's going to be equal to document dot create element and the element that we need to create is just the dev but remember the dev that we need to create has many classes as you can see it has the this class and this class and this class and also has some styles so we need to add all of them to the dev and in order to accomplish that we do that also using JavaScript very simple we can just use the message element that we just created and then dot class list dot add and we pass the element or the class that we want and obviously the classes that we want are these classes I'm gonna just copy them and paste them inside of course here paste them and of course we need to paste uh, each one in a separate line so I'm gonna just copy this one and then here another and another and for the first one we have this class and for the second one we will have the we will only have the float right and for the last one we will have the uh, shadow we also need to add some styles so I'm gonna use message element dot style dot margin equals to the margin that we want remember the margin was the margin was uh, 10 and the padding also 5 so here margin 10 and we also need padding so again message uh, element dot style dot padding and then equals to 5 so now that we have the design ready for uh, the dev we need to add inside the dev itself we need to add two spans these two spans and very simple we can just use the message element dot inner HTML and we pass the complete string of uh, these two elements so I'm gonna just copy it and paste it inside these quotes but of course we need to fix few things firstly we need to append this using plus and we need to add here quote and again here plus and again here plus and here you need to pay attention to how I am going to pass the message as you can see here this we need to remove this and instead we need to pass the message which is this message message text here message text and finally after adding all of these after creating all of these elements we need to pass this or add it to the DOM very simple we can do that using JavaScript and that would be accomplished using the chat container this chat container here chat container dot add child or append child and we pass the message element which is the dev that contains everything here we just pass message element so now we are done let's now test if I go to the browser and refresh and let's type a message here I am great if I click on this end as you can see it's going to be added to the chat container and of course these these two are just here because we already have them inside the container we can delete them later but for now let's uh, just leave them so that we get what we want we get the, the design whenever we want but as you can see now it's the uh, the message here is functional again let's test very cool 
events end and it will be added to the container. Welcome back. So now that we have the send message function, which will send a message that a user is going to type, what about the messages that the chatbot will send to the user? Well, it's very simple. We can just create a function like this, but display it on the left side because it is going to be sent by the chatbot, not by the user. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just create another function here called function called chat but send message and it is going uh, it's also going to take the same parameter which is just a message message text and the good news is that it will have the exact code as the send message but with a few differences so I'm going to copy the complete code and paste it inside the chat bot send message function and what we need to change obviously is the location instead of float right it should be float left and we also need to change here you instead of you we can say chat bot or whatever you want to say here chat bot and the message will be this message that you are going to just pass when you call this function and let's test this function in order to test this function, we can simply just, just call it. Let's call it here, chat, bot send message, and just type any message. Hi from chat bot. And obviously this function is going to be executed once we run the JavaScript code. So let's now go to the browser and refresh. And as you can see, the message will be displayed on the left side and it's going to be by the chatbot. Welcome back. Before working more with JavaScript, I just wanted to tell you that you can add more designs because here, as you can see, it's white and I like white, but you might want to have other colors for the background of maybe this bar or the uh, container. So you can change that simply by going to the index.html and suppose that you want to change the background color of this area. What you would do is that you would go to the media, class media, and then you can add style here equals to background color and then pass in the background color that you wish. Let's just pass this color for testing and let's refresh. And as you can see now, the background color will be uh, this color. And you can also apply that to the, let's say, to the um, background of the container. So the container, this container, the chat container, you can simply create a, a CSS code inside the CSS. Or here, quickly, you can just type background color, ground color and then you pass in the color that you want. Let's pass in this color. And if I save and refresh, as you can see now, the background uh, would be different. And maybe you want to add another color, another background color to each message that you are going to send to the message dev. You would do the same for each message or here in the design, you would just pass background color and pass the color that you want let's pass this color and if I refresh as you can see it's going to be uh, this uh, purple color and uh, you have to pay attention to the combination of colors that you are going to use of course these don't work with one another but you can choose your colors I like white, so I, I'm going to just leave it white throughout my uh, page. But I would highly recommend that you choose the color uh, carefully because you don't want to just add any colors. You need to have uh, colors that work with one another. Welcome back. 
If the user clicks on the send button without typing anything, it is still going to send the message and display it here. And there is nothing to display. There is only the you and nothing. There is no message. And we want to prevent that. We want the user to have the best possible user experience. Therefore, we need to prevent that. And in order to accomplish that, I'm going to go to the main.js and check if there is a message or not. Here we have the add event listener to the send button. And we got the text box.value. And we send it anyway. But we don't want that. What we want is to use if statement and then get the text box to get value. And once we get the value, we need to check it. If there is nothing, then we need to say th something. We need to uh, remind the user that they must uh, first type a message. And here else, if there is a message, we can just send it. Send it. The easiest way to remind the user that they need to type something is by using the alert. Alert here, and then you can say, please type in a message. And now if I refresh, let's click on the send. It's going to display this alert. Please type in a message. And if I type a message, how are you? It's going to be sent. As you can see, it's going to be sent. And this is very important in terms of user experience. Welcome back. After the user types a message and sends it, it's going to be here, still here in the text box. And we don't want that. We, don't, we want to remove the message after the user sends it. So here, if I type, how are you? And then if I send it, as you can see, it's going to be sent. However, it's going to still be there inside the text box. And we don't want that. We want to remove it as soon as the message has been sent. And in order to accomplish that, it's very simple. You can just remove the value from the text box after it has been sent. So here, in the else statement, you can simply say text box dot value equals to nothing because it has been sent. And you can do that from inside the send here. You can do it from the inside the send message function as well. Let's now save and test. Let's refresh. And let's say here, how are you? And click on send. As you can see, it has been sent. And now the text box is empty. Welcome back. After the user types a message and sends it, it's going to be immediately displayed here. And we want to add some animation so that it looks a little bit better. So here, if I type, how are you? And click on send, as you can see, it is going to be displayed immediately. We want some kind of animation or delay, and we can accomplish that using the animate function. So inside the send message, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add some animation here, message element, and then dot animate, and then an array of what we want to do. Let's say that we want to use the easing, and then we want to ease in, ease in. And we also want the opacity to be 0 0.4. And then we want it to be, we want it then to be opacity only 1. So it's going to initially start with 0.4, easing in, and then it will become uh, 1. And the duration in which this is going to happen is, let's say, here an object and then duration. Let's say we want that to happen over a period of one second. So in conclusion, what this is going to do is that it's going to ease in the element 
with an opacity of 0.4 initially until it becomes opacity 1 within a duration of 1 second. Let's now save and test. Refresh. And here, let's type how are you. And if I click on send, as you can see, it takes one second easing in from an opacity of 0.4 to 1. Let's try again. Hi. Hi. And then send. As you can see, it starts with an opacity of 0.4 easing in. And it will end with opacity 1 over 1 second. And this is uh, better in terms of user experience. We want to make sure that the user likes our application. Welcome back. So the message that is going to be sent by the user has the animate effect. Here if I type how are you, as you can see, there is some kind of animation here. And we need to add the same animation for messages that are going to be sent by the chatbot to the user. And we can just copy the uh, effect from the send message function and paste it inside the chatbot send message. So I'm going to paste it here. And obviously, we need the chat container dot uh, app, uh, append child here, just chat. And we pass the uh, element, the message element. And let's test it by just calling the chatbot send message and pass a message. How are you? How are you? And let's save and test. Now, if I refresh, as you can see, it will be displayed immediately. But we want to add some delay. Once the user comes to this page, we want it to take like one second before it gets displayed before it gets sent from the chatbot. And we can do that easily using the set timeout function. So here I can just type, I can just use the set timeout, which is a function that will schedule executing a specific piece of code. So here function, which is the callback function. And inside the callback function, I'm going to paste or I'm, I'm going to call the chatbot send message. So I'm going to just paste it inside the callback. And the second parameter that the set timeout function takes is the delay. How many seconds do you want to pass before sending or executing this code? Let's say one second for now. If I save and refresh, here if I refresh, as you can see, it's going to take one second before this message gets sent from the chatbot to the user. And we also need to remove these two because we no longer need these. These are static. Let's remove them. So I'm going to remove them or just comment them out. We no longer need them, these two. So we can just here all of these. We can just comment them out. And whenever you need to, we never, whenever you need the design, you can just get it. Very simple. So I'm going to just comment them out. And now let's test one more time. And let me just grab it here in the middle of the screen. And as you can see now, if I refresh again, the chatbot is empty. And after one second, the chatbot will send this message saying, how are you? Welcome back. So now that we have this message initially sent by the chatbot after the user comes to this page, but we don't want just to start by saying, how are you? We can start by asking the user uh, his name or her name. So we can here say, hi, and then what's your name? And why I'm doing so is because we want to take control of the conversation. We don't want the user to start by um, typing many things. We just want to start uh, taking control over the conversation and ask the user things and get his or her messages and respond accordingly. 
So now after we, uh, we ask the user about his or her name, we are going to get a response and probably his or her name. And this is not very important. What's important is after that. What's after that? After that is the user will probably start asking many things. Maybe um, the user himself or herself might ask how are you and maybe asks uh, other questions. So we need to kind of have artificial intelligence to uh, answer his questions. But obviously I'm not going to use artificial intelligence. Instead, I will have lots of possible messages that the user might ask and I will respond according to what the user has sent me. So as you can see here, after the user sends a message, what we need to do is that we need to call a function here. After the user sends a message, we need to process this message. So I'm going to here say process message. And this message will work uh, as a artificial intelligence. It's, it's going to take the message and process it and then sends the user a response. And we need to call it here. And of course, we didn't create it yet. I'm going to create it. So let's create it here. Function. Function and then process message. And we need to pass the message. But instead of passing it, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create a global, global variable here called user. And it's going to be an object. And it's going to store messages each time it's going to store the latest message that the user is going to send. And uh, we each time we will be getting it and process it and respond accordingly. So we can access the message here in the process message. But of course, we need first to get it here using user, user.message, and then equals to the, um, the message text equals to the message text. And I have created uh, the, uh, the user object because we might want to use it later uh, for other things. But you can, if you don't want to do so for now, you can just pass the message text to the process message here and create a parameter. But I prefer to create the um, user object so that we might want to use it later. Welcome back. In order to respond to messages that the user is going to send to us, we need to have some kind of a database or a possible messages or an array of expected messages that the user is going to send us. And the process message will use that array. Therefore, I'm going to create an array of objects just here. var array of possible messages. These are messages. This should be possible. It will contain as many uh, expected messages as possible. And the structure will be will not just be an array. It will be an array of objects. So it will contain objects. Each object will have a message, the expected message, message, and it will all it will also have the response. Here, response. So we will have messages and the response. For example, if the user, if we expect that the user is going to send us, how are you? How are you? Then the, then our response should be, we are great or I am great or something like that. I am great. I'm fine. Something like that. And we keep on adding as many as possible because the more we have, the better our application will be. Because we will be able to respond to as many uh, questions or statements or uh, texts that the user is going to send us. And I'm going to always use the uh, small letter. Let's also add another message, uh, a couple of other message and response here, message and response. And let's say that the, uh, if the user sends us a uh, hi, then our response should be uh, hi as well. If the user sends us 
who are you who are you then we should here type uh, I am your assistant and of course this array of uh, possible messages uh, should be used in the process message so we will get the message that the user is going to send us and we call the process um, message and we will try to match the message, message that we will get from the user with one of these messages if we have a match then we will respond with one of these with the with the message that is associated with the um, the message that the user sent us so for example if the user sent us who are you then we will uh, try to match match it with uh, with one of these of course we will find it here we will match it with this one with the third element of this array and we will use the response attribute of the third element which is I am your assistant and in order to pull off that I'm going to be using the filter uh, function of the array uh, class so what I'm going to do is that once we get the message from the user uh, I am first going to access the array array of possible messages and then I'm going to call the filter and then inside the filter we will be filtering this array we will be filtering this array in order to get a message that is equal that matches the message sent by the user so here inside what I'm going to do is that value if the value dot message that includes if it includes the message sent by the user user dot message dot uh, to lower with the lower case so that we uh, we avoid getting no response and this this statement will will return only um, elements in that array that match the message sent by the user so if the user sends hi it's going to return this and then we can use the response uh, we can access the response key which contains hi and then send it uh, to the user or respond to the user so here we can say var result result equals to this statement and then finally we can uh, send this result of course th this result will be an array remember be careful here it's an array array of our results so it could contain more than one element so we need just to get only one element so what I'm gonna do here is result and only the first element and then we access the response which is uh, going to be a string and send it to the user so here we can say var response response equals to this and we send it to the user using the chat uh, bot send message and pass the response response so let's now test quickly if I go to uh, the browser and refresh and let's send this message let's send let's send how are you we should get I am great from the chatbot so here if I type how are you I should get I should get I am great as you can see I get the response immediately of course we need to add some delay and stuff like that and some checks and I'm gonna work on them later but for now if you type any message any of these expected messages the chatbot will detect them and respond with uh, these with one of these uh, responses so if I type hi if I send I am gonna get hi back from the chatbot welcome back now we have a few messages where we can respond to expected messages sent from a user so if I type here hi I am going to get hi back but I'm gonna get it immediately and that doesn't look natural we want to delay this message received from the uh, chatbot and it's very simple in order to accomplish that we just use 
the set timeout function set timeout function and here we have function and we pass we um, we call the chatbot send message inside the callback of the set timeout here and we need to add a delay let's say one second after one second it's going to send uh, this message to us so if now I refresh and if I say hi as you can see after one second I'm gonna get back this message and now it looks more natural if I say how are you now it's natural it's as if somebody if a real person is uh, talking to me over the chat as you know we only have three responses and three expected messages but what if the user sends a message that is not inside this array of possible messages it will create an error because we will get null here in the in the response we will get nothing because there is no response there is nothing that matches the message that the user sent us so we need to check if the response contains elements or not and before we do that I'm gonna show you the error if here I type something a message that isn't here isn't one of these let's say what's your name if I send I am I'm not gonna get anything back and if I use the inspect you will find there is an error in the console it's going to say here cannot read property response of undefined because this response now is undefined there is no uh, result and the result is null here we have the the response of undefined at line 88 which is this so the response is nothing there is no there is nothing inside the response so we can simply here use if statement if and then we check the result if the result that length greater than zero meaning that if this array contains contains elements then it means that there is there is a result or results and we can in at um, this point we can uh, call the response get the response store it in the response variable and send uh, the uh, the use the chat but send message to send the user a message otherwise here let's just move this and else here else if the if the uh, result dot length isn't greater than zero then at this point we can just display an error or we can uh, send a message that says to the user what uh, what are you saying or something like that or what do you mean something like that we can say just uh, what do you mean so here I'm gonna copy this part and paste it and the message that I'm gonna send to the user if the chat uh, bot doesn't detect doesn't find the response the appropriate response to the message it's going to say here it's going to say I don't I don't understand that's it if I now let's save and run if I refresh and send a message that isn't here that isn't one of these let's say what's your name your name and if I send after one second I'm gonna get this message back from the chatbot this response back from the chatbot which is I don't understand why because what's your name isn't inside the expected uh, messages sent by me by a user and whatever text you type that isn't here that isn't in the in the expected um, messages in, isn't inside the array of possible messages 
immediately the chatbot will say, I don't understand. Let's try something else. What do you mean? And send and after one second I'm gonna get again I don't understand because what do you mean is isn't inside the array of possible messages. Welcome back. So now we only have three expected messages inside the array of possible messages. And this is not a sophisticated chatbot. We need to have as many expected messages as possible so that we can respond to the user. And here we can add as many as we want. I would suggest adding at least 50 expected messages at least so that you respond to the user. So here I'm going to just add a few and we can later add more. Here instead of uh, who are you we can say what's your name? Your name and the response could be I am a chatbot and here we can say we can expect a user to say uh, how old are you? how old are you? and the answer is I am ageless and we can also say do you have children? Do you have kids? I can say here, no, I don't. So now we have few um, expected messages. And as I told you, I recommend adding more so that you respond to the user. But there is also another problem we have, which is if we type, let's first save and refresh, if we send what's your name but without this apostrophe so here what's what is with an with the is what is your name it's not going to t detect this as a match because it it doesn't uh, this one doesn't match this one it must have it must be like this it must have the apostrophe in order to match what's your name but here if I send what is your name and send I am going to get I don't understand therefore in order to fix that in order to uh, respond if the user doesn't use the apostrophe you can simply just expect that some users will type what is here so you need to have both cases you need to have you have it with the apostrophe and without the apostrophe. But if we send, for example, how are you without the question mark, it's going to detect it as a match. It's going to detect this uh, text that we are going to type, which is how are you, as a match to this one. If I click on send, it's going to respond with I am great. I am great. Because technically, how are you matches this one except for the, except for the question mark but what is your name what's your name doesn't match what is your name so you need to take this into account so that you uh, respond to the user welcome back so if the user just types how for example it's going to return i am great but the user didn't say how are you and this is because we are using the includes, which is going to check if only a word exists within a string. And it's going to, of course, return uh, this. And it could also return other things. So for example, if I just type H and then send, it's going also to return I am great. If I type W, it's going to return or respond with I am great. Because W exists in the first message and this is a problem and in order to fix it we can simply use if statement in the process message we can instead of starting to filter 
the array of possible messages, we can first check using if statement, check for what the user has typed. So we can use the user that message, and then if that message, that length, is smaller than say five characters or four characters, because there is no word uh, that is um, four characters or five characters that is meaningful in our situation here. Almost there is no, because if the user just types who or how or what, they are meaningless. They have to write something uh, more than just five characters. So we can here check for if the number of characters is greater than five, then we can proceed. And then we have we can have else statement or else if even. So let's add also else if. So here we can say else if. And if the user user dot message equals to how or 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 if the user user dot message equals to who then in in that case we can just display what do you mean or something like that and then we also have else which is the most important else so in case the the message is uh, length is greater than five then we can proceed otherwise we can display here call the chat uh, but send message and say just a question mark because um, how or who are meaningless in this context and then else in the else statement we can say please send me a complete complete sentence but also we need also the uh, set time out so that it looks natural so we can paste it here and remove remove this part remove this part and paste this and also we need also here the set time out and with this message with this message so let's now save and run refresh if now I just send one character or for example send it's going to say here please send me a complete sentence because oh it doesn't mean anything here if I say how and send I'm gonna just send the the chatbot where it will send just a question mark because how here is meaningless and uh, this is a good fix to a situation like that and of course you can add as many else if uh, as you wish and with or and an or in order to make all of these checks so that your chatbot becomes sophisticated and a response to whatever the user is going to type welcome back so I have added a set of other questions as well so as I told you before the more you add the better I would suggest adding at least 50 questions and here let's test a few do you sleep early and if I send I'm gonna get the response no I don't because here it says no I don't let's say uh, do you have a car do you have a car and if I send I'm gonna get uh, I, um, I travel through space something like that so it works perfectly and this is the first scenario where uh, you will let the user send whatever message he wants but in that case you have to have so many questions and so many responses so that you can always respond to the user and of course it depends upon the context which um, questions are you expecting from the user and the accurate you expect the questions the more responses you will uh, send to the user 
and the more accurate responses you are going to send to the user. Welcome back. So the first scenario was that you are going to let the user ask uh, questions and you answer depending upon expecting the questions and the responses and, send the, and sending the responses after you get the expected message. And the next scenario that I'm going to teach you is that you take control over the conversation and collect data from the user. So you would start by sending questions and getting answers and just getting answers. Maybe you want to use them later or you just want to um, talk to the uh, user. So you are going to control the conversation by starting at the uh, conversation with a question. And each time the user uh, sends a message or a response, then you will immediately ask another question. So in order to accomplish that inside the send uh, button, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to not I'm not going to I'm not going to process the message. Instead, I'm going to create another function that will that will immediately ask another question after the user uh, responds to the to the uh, previous question. So what I'm going to create here is that first first let, let's create the uh, an array of questions. So here question questions to ask and the structure of this array will also be a an array of objects and each object will have a question to ask the user and it will also have the answer and the answer will be supplied by the user answer and we will be storing the answer to each question in, in that uh, object. And the answer will be initially nothing. And the question, of course, will be whatever question you want to ask the user. Let's say, what's your name? What's your name? And the second object, let's just copy this and paste it a couple of times. One, two, and here we can say, how old are you? How old are you? What is your job title? And now we have a an array of three objects. And now the most important part which is creating a function that will continue asking the user each time the user responds. So here I'm going to create a function called ask questions. And as I told you, each time it's going to send the, uh, the next question. So the first thing that it's going to start with question number one. And how would we know that we are at question number one, not two or three? By using the user object. We can here create a counter that will be zero. And here, depending upon this counter, we will move um, from the first question to the next question. And each time we move, we increase this counter. So the first thing is that I'm going to use the set timeout. And after each time, we will ask a question after one second of the response, after one second of getting a response from the user. So here, one second. Uh, the function that will send the question to the user will be the uh, chatbot send message. And then we access the questions to ask. And then we use the counter, which will be initially zero, user dot counter, and then dot question, because we want to access the question. And the uh, chatbot send message will get the job done by sending the question to the user. And that is not it, because we want to increase the counter after we ask a question. 
So here we need to increase the counter so that next time we, when we call the ask questions next time, we will ask the next question, not the same question. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to increase the counter by using uh, user.counter plus plus to move on to the next question. So it's going to send the question, the first question, and then increase the counter. And the next time we call the ask question or questions, it's going to um, ask the next question because the counter would be increased. Let's say let's here call it ask question because it's going to only ask one question, not questions. And we need to call this function from inside the from inside the add event listener, the click event listener that uh, is on the button because each time the user sends a message, we will ask the next question. So here ask question. And one more thing is that we need to initially ask the first question because if I save and refresh, nothing will happen. And the user will start by saying something and we don't want that. Instead, we want to start asking questions immediately. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna call the ask question immediately. Let's call it, let's just call it here ask question only one time so this ask question will be run will be executed only one time and um, other times this ask question will be called each time the user clicks on the button meaning that each time the user sends a message let's now refresh and as you can see I am immediately going to get what's your name and then send and I'm gonna get the next question after I answer the previous one how old are you and so on and so forth each time I uh, answer a question each time I, ans uh, I answer a question I'm gonna get the next question but of course these aren't enough need to add we need to add more questions and the context also is very important you can just ask uh, general questions or maybe you want to ask specific questions about specific topic something like that welcome back so we need to store the answers that the user is going to type here inside the corresponding question and in order to accomplish that, we can just access the questions uh, to ask array and store this answer as the user clicks on the button. We will be able to get that answer and store it in the array. But how are we going to do so? It's very simple, actually. All you need to do is that inside the add event listener, we already got the message using the user.message. And we can access the, um, the array, which is questions to ask. And then we need to, uh, we need to access the correct object using user, user dot counter. And then dot response equals to the user dot message. And remember that user.message is a temporary message. Each time the user clicks on the button, it's going to store a new message inside it. But the problem, the problem with this is that it's going to store the message, it's going to store the answer in the wrong place. Why? Because the counter will start with zero. And we will call the, we will call the ask question the first time and the, the uh, counter will increase immediately to one the first time without getting an answer. And in order, to, in order to fix that and to store the answer in the correct place, we can here just type minus one so that we go back to counter zero, counter equals to zero, and uh, store the correct answer. 
and of course we need to just print out the um, here console this is just for testing in order to see that each question has been stored in the correct location so here questions to ask and then user that counter minus one and that's it each time the user uh, answers we will be displaying we will be printing out the question as well as the corresponding answer let's now refresh and let's answer these questions and let me just open the console to show you that the answer has been printed out as you can see the um, the question what's your name and the corresponding answer let's answer the second question and send and you will find out that as you can see here how old are you and the answer the response has been stored in the correct location what's your job and again the response has been stored in the correct the answer has been stored in the correct location welcome back in order to avoid this error that we will get we need to only uh, access the questions to ask array access its elements only if there is elements so here simply we can just simply say if here if questions to ask dot length dot length greater than the user dot counter only in this case we can send the message otherwise I am not going to uh, try I'm not going to try even to access the question because it's going to display an error and we don't want any errors so let me just here refresh and show you that the error this error will never be will never be displayed again and let's just continue uh, answering quickly just dummy answers one and then two and then the last question and as you can see there is no error because this uh, function the um, this code this uh, block of code will not be executed if the uh, if the user counter equals or greater than the questions to ask length meaning that if all questions has been sent to the user then there is no need to just um, continue asking the user because we already asked the user all possible questions we have welcome back previously I have stored the answer inside the response key and they actually should be stored in the answer key not the response because in our array in our questions to ask array we have the answer attribute for each object not the response and to fix that we should just change this from dot response to answer to dot answer and both are correct the only difference was just the key so if I refresh again and start answering these questions and one and if uh, I check the console as you can see they will be stored inside the answer uh, key instead of the response but both are correct by the way the only difference is the key name welcome back so I have added a couple of questions and these questions depend upon your intention what do you want to do with these answers maybe you have a an e-commerce store and you just want to collect people's data uh, like their names their age uh, these things maybe you want to know your visitors where they are from and how old are they things like that maybe you have a company and you want to get employees opinions about a specific topic or something in that case of course these questions would be completely different 
So these questions, there is no rule in terms of choosing these questions. These questions depend upon your attention and what do you want to do with them. But why would we use uh, this in a chatbot? Well, this actually is easier because you don't have to have customer service. You can just create the system, which is just an automatic system that is going to get all of what you need without any intervention from people. So it's easier and economical. And of course, it's fun too. Welcome back. If the conversation goes beyond the height of the chat container, we would have to scroll manually so that we see the last message. And we don't want that. What we want is to automatically scroll to the last message so that you can see the last message. And I'm going to show you here if we don't scroll what is going to happen. Let's just send too many messages so that the conversation goes beyond the height. Here, let's just answer these questions. And let's keep going. And here. And now, if I answer this question, let's answer this question. And I'm going to show you what is going to happen. If I send this message, look what's going to happen. What's going to happen is that I will not be able to see it. I will have to scroll. As you can see, if I scroll, only if I, if I scroll, I will be able to see this message. And we don't want that. We want to automatically and programmatically go to the last message, scroll to the last message. And in order to accomplish that, it's very easy, actually. We need to get the height of this container and store it in the scroll top so that we scroll to the last message. And of course, we need to do that if a user sends a message or if the chatbot sends a message. So we will have to do that in two uh, separate functions in the chatbot uh, send message as well as the send message. Let's start with the send message. So here at the end, after we send the message, what we need to do is that we need to scroll to last message. And in order to scroll to last message, all we need to do is that we need first to get the chat chat container. We need to get the chat container dot scroll height. We need to get the height, scroll height, and store it into inside the chat chat container dot scroll top that's it and this will get the job done so let's also copy it and paste it inside the chat but send message as well at the end I'm gonna paste it and now whenever the chatbot sends a message or whenever a user sends a message it is going to scroll to the last message. Let's save and refresh and test that. So now let's just uh, answer these questions. And then um, let's continue. And now with the last message, as you can see now, let's answer this message and see what is going to happen. If I send, look what is going to happen. It is going to scroll to this message, to the last message, unlike before where we had to scroll manually. Now it's automatically going to scroll to the last message. And let's also send some dummy message. Hi. As you can see, it is going to scroll to the to last message. And as you can see now, the conversation is too long. Is It's... Uh, beyond the height of the chat container and whenever I send a message it's going to scroll to last message and this is exactly what we want even if the chatbot sends a message it is going to scroll to the last message that the um, chatbot sent me because we have the same exact code inside the 
chatbots and message function as well. Welcome back. So far, we only had two types of applications or two types of scenarios. And before I move on, I just wanted to make sure that you understand this. The first um, scenario or application type is, the, is to let the user start the conversation. It could be a conversation about anything or a specific conversation. And the functions associated with this type of application is the process message because we are waiting for a message from the user. And once we get it, we will be uh, processing it. And the array that is related to it is the array of possible messages. And the key here is that is to have so many messages and responses, expected messages and responses, so that you can respond to the user. So I want you to remember that the most important things is the array of expected messages or possible messages with responses, corresponding responses, and the process message function. Those are the most important things when it comes to to let the user start a conversation. And you can employ that to anything you want. It could be, again, it could be about a specific thing or a general thing. The second type of application is the chat but starts the conversation, which is asking questions. In that case, you might just want to collect data about users or you just want a, a normal chatbot about anything or a specific thing again. And the functions associated with this are first we have the ask question. We first need to ask the question and wait for the answer. Once we get the answer, we can store it inside the questions to ask inside the answer key and then we move on to the second question so we start with the first question which is uh, what's your name or whatever question you want and then you get the answer and then you move on to the second question and then you move to the third and you continue until the uh, array finishes so this is the second type of application of chatbot we have the ask question function and the questions to ask array so these very very important and the uh, questions again the questions can be general or specific and there is no problem about adding um, about the length of the array you can add as many questions as you want maybe three questions maybe ten questions it depends upon your application So now we have two types of applications. Welcome back. So the third type of applications is going to be an assistant. It's just going to provide a user with options and the user just has to select an option and the chat assistant or chatbot will respond according to the choice. So what I'm going to do is that I am going to initially display some options, for example, one for weather, two for sports, three for news, something like that. And it can be, of course, it can be more specific about specific topics. And the user will just type the number. The user has to choose a number, one for, let's say, one for weather. If the user types one, then we will get um, the weather for of the current weather for that day. So the first thing that we need to do to accomplish that is to create a function that is going to display these options. And I'm gonna just here create this function, here function called initialize options. And inside this function, what I'm gonna be doing is that I'm gonna first have an array let options equals to an array of options and it's going to um, include objects one and two and three let's start with the first one number which is the choice number one and we can also use the index but just for the sake of making it a more 
illustrative I'm gonna just use the number key and also the option number and the option or the choice let's name it the choice is going to be let's say weather and the second one let, let me just copy this two times one and two and we need to change the number to two and to three the second thing we can say we can say here uh, sports and let's say news and again you can make these more specific about a specific topic and now we have these three options we need to display these three options to the user so in order to display them we have to create a dev just like we did before in the in the send in the chatbot send message we need to create uh, an element and add uh, classes and then add the spans and then add it to the screen we can copy the complete code here and go back to the initialize initialize options and paste it and we need to fix few things firstly we need to loop through the options array and display the options display the first option the second option and the third option and in order to accomplish that I'm gonna here create a loop for and then let i equals to zero and then i if i is small it is still smaller than the the options array options dot length then we will continue and increase the i and keep adding the spans so here span and let me just move this close, close this and move this inside the for loop and each time we will be adding a span or a div it's it's your choice to choose a span or a div and I'm gonna show you both let me just remove this there is no need to add this and each time when we loop through the the uh, options array we need to get the number and the choice so the number is going to be here array or options options and then options of i and then dot number we need to get the number and we, we also need here space and we also need to get options of i we need to get the, the choice dot choice and more importantly is that we need to append this span to the to the previous span because if we just because if we keep adding these spans to the inner HTML of the message element we will eventually get the the last choice only so we need to add plus here plus equals so that we add the previous one and then we append the next one so make sure to add this plus equals and then at the end we just animate and we finally just display the message to the user let's now save and if I call this function initialize options of course this initialize options will be called only once at the beginning of the program so I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna call it let me just call it here initialize options and let's now refresh and see what's going to happen if I refresh as you can see I'm gonna get one weather two sports three news of course we need to add some some um, spaces or a break so that we add each one in a separate line so you can simply here add add here break br tag if I refresh each one will be added in a separate line or you can use a div or uh, other attack and we also need to just uh, ask the user to choose one of them so we can simply here at the beginning before calling the initialize options we can 
call the chat chatbot send message and send a message that is going to say please choose choose or choose an option now if I refresh as you can see I'm gonna get um, please choose an option and we have three options so now we are done with the first part which is just displaying the options so that the user can choose one of these options welcome back so now that we have these options displayed to the user what we need to do is that we need to get the choice and as you can see here in the send button add event listener click event listener each time we want to use an application we need to use its functions or its function so Previously, we used the process message and then we used the ask question and we no longer want these and we also no longer want this. And instead, I'm going to create another function just for the assistant, which is going to get the, the user's choice and then respond accordingly. Here, what, here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to call this function assistant I'm gonna name it assistant response and of course we need to create it and I'm gonna create it here just let me just close this and here let me create it function and then assistant response and this function what is this function is going to do is that it's going to take the choice that the user is going to choose his choice here one two or three or whatever and then it's going to respond according to that so if the user types one then we will get the weather to that user and display it to the user so what i'm going to do is that here i am going to get the uh, response by passing it this time i'm going to pass it here we have the user dot message or the message text you can just pass the message text message text to the assistant response and inside the assistant response you can get the message text and the problem with the message text is that we need to fix a few things first we need to make sure that there is no spaces because the user might type one and then space and then send we only want the number so in order to get rid of that we can use the trim function and we also need to make sure that this is an integer not a string because if the user types one and, and uh, sends it's going to be a string it's always going to be a string in fact so we need to convert it to an integer and all of that is, is uh, very simple you can do all of that you can change all of that in a single line of code so the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the parse parse int which is going to convert this function is going to convert an string to an integer and we pass the message text but before we just pass the message text we need to also make sure that there is no spaces using the trim trim so we trim the string and then convert it to an integer and finally we can here store it in a variable called user choice and that's it now we have the user's choice and after we get the user's choice we need to check which number the user chose maybe the user chose one two or three or whatever and then once we get it we can respond and you can use if statements to check the user choice or the switch I'm gonna use the switch this time instead of the if statement you can use again you can use the if statement so user choice and then inside the choice inside the uh, switch what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the cases so case if that user choice equals to one then we can do something here do something and in our case we will get get weather case 2 
case two, we will do another thing, which is just get um, sports, maybe sports news. And case three, case three, which is just get news, general news, general news. And I'm gonna leave it open for you because you might want to add your own uh, conditions. Maybe you want to get a specific thing, not just the news or the weather. And also we need a default. The default is very, very important. Why? Because the default will be executed each time the user choice doesn't match any of the cases. So if the user, for example, types four, we don't have four, we only have one, two, or three, then we will execute the code inside the default. And also maybe the user types some dummy things here or some unreadable messages, then at that point, we need to just call or execute the code inside the default. And also we need to break here each time after the case we break to get out of the to get out of the switch. So always break here break. And here we also need to break each time you have a case you need to break. And what I'm going to do just for now is that I'm going to use the alert just for testing for now just for testing to make sure that everything is working. So here alert and here we can say you chose weather and we can just copy this just copy this and paste it inside here and here sports news and the default default so now let's test if I uh, save everything and make sure that you call it, you call the function from inside the click event and pass, of course, pass the message text. And now let's refresh. Now we have three options. Let's say one, send, and I'm going to get this alert. You chose weather, which, me which means that the switch works perfectly. Let's use two. And I'm going to get you, cho you chose uh, sports and then three send and you chose news if I type some dummy message and send what I'm gonna get is default so the default will always be executed if the message doesn't match our uh, choices and our conditions welcome back so now if the user chooses number one, which is the weather, we need to get the weather of their current city or their current location. So inside the case one, we need to call a function that would accomplish that. And instead of the alert, the alert here was just for testing. We no longer need it. I'm gonna just, re, uh, I'm gonna just comment it out. And instead, I'm gonna create a function. First, I'm gonna name it here get location which is the current location and weather so this function basically this function is going to get the location and inside this function once we get the location we will be able to get the weather of that location so you can just name it get location but i'm going to name it get location and weather so that things become clear for now get location then weather, then weather. So we now that we have called this function once the user chooses number one, we need of course to create it. So I'm gonna create this function. Let's see create it function and get location and weather. So how would we get the location, the current location uh, of the user where the user is browsing or using our chat assistant or chat bot. Well, it's very simple. We can use the navigator.geolocation. And the geolocation has a function called get current position. 
which is going to get the current location, the current, the current latitude and longitude. So here, current location, and it takes three functions. Uh, one of them is mandatory, which is the success, and the error, and another, a third optional one. Let's use the, um, let's first use the success. In case of success, we will get the position in case of success. So we have this, this is the first function, which is in case of success. The second function, in case of the error, error callback. Here, error. And we can just here use it. And the position, this position that we are going to get contains a key pause dot um, coords and then the and the latitude and also the longitude. So we need these two because these are the two parameters that we are going to use in order to get the weather. So here we can get the uh, latitude and store it in let lat equals to this and let longitude equals to position dot coars dot longitude and in case of error we can simply use the console.log and display the error or the alert to display the error to the user as well so it's up to you and now after we get the location we need to create another function that is going to use the latitude and the longitude in order to get the current location but that would require an external service that provides weather information. Welcome back. So after getting the location, after getting the latitude and the longitude, we need to make a request to a service in order to get the weather of that location. So basically we need to make an HTTP request. And I'm gonna use Ajax to accomplish that. And here I'm gonna create a function, get weather request which is a function that is going to be executed and get the weather from an external service and I'm gonna obviously pass the latitude and the longitude so let's create this function so here I'm gonna create it function get weather request which is a an http request to get the weather and it takes two parameters the latitude and the longitude and in order to make in order to start making ajax request we first need to have a variable global variable so that we can create an object of the xml http request class so here i'm going to create at the top of the file i'm going to create a variable called HTTP request and this will be accessible throughout the script so inside the get weather request what we need to do is to create an object HTTP we use the HTTP request equals to new XML HTTP request and it's actually fairly simple to create an HTTP request an Ajax request in JavaScript you first need to HTTP request dot open to use the open function and the open function takes two parameters the first one is the method which is going to be a get request and the second parameter which is the service the URL of the service that we will call in order to get the weather and for now I'm gonna just leave it empty and then the second thing is just to use the HTTP request dot send to send that request and we also need a way to handle what's coming from the server so I'm, I'm going to use the HTTP request dot on ready change 
and it's going to be equal to a function. That function will handle what's coming from the server, whether the server responds successfully or not. So here we can say handle whether response, response, because this is the response, this, this function will handle the response that is coming from the server. And we need obviously to create it. I'm going to create it here function and handle response. And this might seem very compl complicated, but actually it is not. They are just few small functions, as you can see, few functions, and they will get the job done. And here inside the handle with a response, what we need to do is first to use if statement to check the status. So first here, I'm going to use the HTTP request dot ready state. If it's equal to XML, XML HTTP request dot done, then we will proceed. And we also need to check if the HTTP request dot status equals to 200. If it's successful, then at this point we will have the weather information. Otherwise, we will have errors. So in case of success, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the console log to display the content HTTP request dot response text, which includes the uh, the content, the weather content. Else, if you have an error, we can also just display it, or we can alert that error if you wish. You can use the alert, and you can say there was an unexpected error. And we are pretty much done. The only thing that remains is that we need just to get the URL of a, an external ser service in order to get the weather. Welcome back. So now we need a service that will provide us with weather information of that specific location. And the service that I'm going to use is called Weather Stack. And it has free and paid plans. The free plan will let you make 1,000 calls per month. And of course, if your application grows at this point, you would have to get a paid plan. But you can start with the free plan, which will only provide you with 1,000 calls per month. So you need to first create an account. If you go to the main website, you need to create an account and sign up and then once you create an account just go to the dashboard and once you go to the dashboard you will find your API access key which is the most important thing because this key will let you access weather information and what we need to do is to get the URL in order to get the URL you can just check the documentations and it's very simple this is the URL as you can see we can copy it and in our project in our project we can just paste it but we we will have to fix few things firstly this is the yeah, URL but what we need to fix is that we need to first paste the access key instead of this of this your underscore access underscore key let me just add this so I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to get my key which is this let me just copy it and I'm gonna paste it instead of this and make sure to remove the spaces so here should be should uh, you should have no spaces and then here and and then the query the query equals to you should remove also this space equals to New York Actually, we aren't going to use the query here with the name of the city. We will use instead the latitude and the longitude. Let me just remove this space and also this space. And I'm going to remove New York. And I'm going to append here plus the lat and then comma. 
and then the lung. And this is actually incorrect. Why? Because the lat and lung are not strings. We need to convert them to strings so we can use the parse, parse int, and we pass the lat, and then plus, and then we add this, we add this comma inside quotes, and then plus, and then again parse, parse, here parse int, and then we pass also the longitude. And as you can see, this is the structure. And make sure that the structure is correct, because if the structure is incorrect, if there is only one thing missing here, you will not get the weather information, and you will get, get an error. So make sure that everything is correct. First, you need to have the URL, as you can see, and then current, and then question mark, and then access underscore key equals to your access key, which is here, and then and this, as you can see, this is and, and query equals to parse int the latitude, and then plus, comma, and then plus parse int the longitude. And all of that, of course, inside the second parameter of the open function. Now let's save and test. So if I grab our browser, and let's refresh, and we will get this up, these options. Let me just use the weather, and once I use the weather, send, as you can see, it's first going to ask me to enable the location. If the location isn't enabled, it will ask me to enable the location. If I allow, it will continue. Let's allow, and obviously, the results will be displayed only in the console. For now, later we will be displaying it in the chat container, but let's check the the console. So let me also zoom in so that you can see the structure of the coming response. As you can see, we have the location, the latitude, and the longitude. And also we have the weather. Here it says the weather description, partly cloudy, wind speed, uh, wind degree, and also the temperature or pressure, humidity, all of this good stuff. And Next, we will be just getting these and displaying them to the user instead of just displaying them inside the console. Welcome back. So now that we have the response, we need to access its elements. And as you can see, it's a JSON. So first of all, we need to parse this JSON response. So in our code, what I'm going to do is that I am going to first use the HTTP request dot response text and pass it inside JSON JSON dot parse and I'm gonna pass this response text that way we will be able to access all elements and I'm gonna store the result inside a variable called response And now this response is a valid JSON. And we no longer need, need this console log. But how are we going to access each element or each key in this JSON response? Well, you have two choices. Either you need to copy this response and examine it in another software or text editor, or you can just refer back to the documentation of the provider and as you can see they provide you with the response and this is the response that you are going to get it's exactly like this but this is just very difficult to read so you need as I told you you need to copy it and examine it outside or you can just refer you can just refer to this and check which keys you want to access so what we want to access is the city here we need to access the name of the city. We also need to access the weather, which is the most important thing, the temperature. And we also need to access the uh, weather icons. We have an icon and maybe the humidity as well. And you have a bunch of other elements as well or keys as well. 
so it's up to you which ones you want to use but these are the ones that I'm gonna use and you can pick up your choices so I'm gonna get back to our code and access the first the name of the city and also the temperature the weather icons and the humidity so in our code here now I can access all of these and I'm gonna store all of them in just a variables so that they become easier to read here let's say city equals to response dot location and then dot your name we also have let the temp for temperature response dot current dot temperature we also need the humidity let hum for humidity equals to response dot current current dot humidity and finally I'm gonna also access the icon equals to response dot current but this time it's an array so it's going to be weather underscore icons and we need to access the first element only which is in which is uh, stored in index zero and now that we have the most important weather parameters we need to pass them to the user we need to display them in the chat container how would we do so it's actually very very simple we can simply use the chat but send message and pass them or we can create another function in order to just add some other designs and display it in a specific way but I'm gonna still be using the chat but send message instead of creating another function so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass these to the chatbot send message function but before I do so I am going to work on the design the way I want these parameters to be displayed so I'm gonna create a variable here called message to send and it's going to be equal to all of these appended in a specific way first I'm gonna just use the break and then I'm gonna use the message to send plus equals to append the next thing that I want which is going to be the icon the weather icon so I'm gonna here create a span and inside that span I will have the weather icon So inside it here inside the span image and inside the image we will be have we will have the the uh, source which is going to be equal to the icon so here we need to append and plus plus and let me here pass the icon so now we have the icon and make sure that you append this correctly otherwise you might get an error and then we need to message to send in a new line here plus equals break another break and then again message to send plus equals and now I'm gonna pass the city here city and then equals to plus to the city and in a new line again in a new line plus equals the temperature which is going to be equal to this temperature this temp plus temp and we need also to add the the um, C for Celsius because it's in Celsius and then message to send humidity which is the last thing but also here we need the break message to send equals plus equals break 
and here plus equals humidity humidity and then plus we need the humidity and also add here spaces here and here and here and now that we are done with the message that we will be sending to the user we can use the chat but send message and we pass the message which is the message to send and as you noticed now the message to send variable now contains everything we need the user to see and here by the way this should be hume not, hum not, not humidity it was here hume so make sure that it's correct and now we are done let me now open our browser and refresh and we no longer need the console I'm gonna close it and let me choose number one and send and allow and it's being processed and as you can see now I get the temperature I get the hum humidity I get the city I get the weather icon which is uh, cloudy and here the humidity should be in a new line so here I should add message to send plus equals break and let me just refresh and do it again one send and as you can see now now it looks better we have the city we have the temperature we have the humidity and now we have a responsive chat assistant when it comes to the weather welcome back this is an extra tutorial on how to access keys of a JSON response as you can see after we use the json.parse we have the response uh, variable and this response variable represents the complete response represents the complete JSON all of this all of this part and as you can see it re represents all of this and in order to access any of these keys we use the dot notation so if you if we want to access the location we use dot and then location as you can see location dot location if we access the name inside the location we would type location dot name if you want to access the country you would again use response dot location and dot country instead of name if you want to access the region you would replace the name with the region and if you want to access keys inside the current you would type response dot current because this is current dot current and then any key inside the current in our case we used the temperature so here we have current and then dot temperature and we also had the humidity so here I accessed the current and then dot humidity I also accessed the weather underscore icons and be careful here because the weather underscore icons is an array it's not an object and it's inside the current so I first accessed the current response that current response that current and then weather underscore icons which is an array and it only contains one element therefore I used square brackets and then zero because I want to access index number zero which is the first element first and only element so if you want to access any key other than these you would use the same exact way you only use the response and then you call the key the key that you want if you want to access the location you would type response dot location and then dot the key that you want if you want to access the current you would type response dot current and then the key that you want so this is a quick tutorial on how to access keys inside a JSON response
Welcome back. We want to make the user experience even much better. So what I'm going to do is that once the user chooses one of these, we want to display a message that is going to say, please wait, so that the user knows that we are processing his request. And also, after we bring the result to the user, we bring what the user wants, we want to also to ask them to choose some, something else or, or if they want something else, we need to display another message. So I'm going to again display this message again. So once the user here, once the user chooses something, here we want to display a message, to send a message that is going to say, please wait, please wait. And also, if the user chooses something invalid, I'm going to here you I'm gonna say please please choose a valid option or number you can say valid number because we only accept numbers and you can display it instead of the alert you can use the your chatbot chat about send message and pass this message please uh, choose a valid number and I'm going to show you both options here and also after the weather after we get location and weather after we display the uh, results here we want to also ask the user to choose another thing so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the here the handle uh, weather response and after we display the message chatbot send message we want to display the message again which is initialize options and this is useful in case you have a big list of options so here I'm gonna just initialize options just right after the the um, response has been displayed here let's now save and see how it's going to look like if I refresh now and choose number one which is the weather and send and as you can see now it says here please wait because we are processing his request and we will bring the result to the user and next we also have this which is going to display the um, the options and by the way we also need to display this again please choose an option so I'm gonna again here I am going to here to use the chat but send message and then please choose an option and let's again test now if I refresh again and choose number one and then send and here it says please wait it it uh, brings me the uh, results and then it also asks me asks me to please choose another option or an option and if I choose an invalid option, we only have one, two, three. If I type something just incorrect or any other number, four, five, whatever, and I send, I'm, I'm going to get this. Please choose a valid number. And I'm going to also get this. Please choose a valid number. So whenever the number is incorrect or the message is incorrect, when it comes to the chat assistant, we will always display this. Please choose a valid number. So the user only chooses one of these. And now user experience would be much, much better. Welcome back. So now that we have the weather, if the user chooses the weather, we will bring, bring the weather to him or her. But now what about the sports? Well, you can find a service to get uh, sports or you can do something else. Let's do something, something else. What I'm going to do instead of using an external service for the sports, I am going to use the window dot open and I'm going to just open Google HTTP and then Google dot com and then slash search and then we are going to search for just sports the keyword sports 
and if now I save and refresh and choose and choose sports too if I click on send as you can see first it's going to display you chose sports and then it's going to open a new window with the with Google display of searching for sports so this is another way of helping the user uh, gets the uh, sports news or something like that by simply using Google or maybe another search engine you can simply just um, use the window that open to open that link and of course you can do the same with the news you can just use the window window dot open and pass instead of the instead of uh, sports here you can just pass news and let's let's refresh and choose three and send and and it's going to open a new window with uh, news or again you can use a service you can use an external service to get the news but since we are here using general topics using sports and news it's a little difficult to get um, all of this all the sports news and all news it's better to have to be specific here so that you find the service that provides that specific topic welcome back so now that we have three different types of applications my recommendation is that you need to separate each one in a different project in a different file because each one has a different job to do each one has a different objective so I wouldn't recommend mixing these together because you will not get the best user experience and things, things will be very complicated for example you can't use the uh, assistant application with collecting data it would be weird and unnatural so what you would do you would go to for example to the process message which is related to the first uh, type of application and add it in a separate file and also add its arrays such as array of possible messages and other essential things such as the event listener which is mandatory for all types of applications and you will have a separate a completely separate project and you do the same for the collecting data you would add the this array the questions to ask with its function which is ask questions or ask question and of course the event listener and for the assistant uh, application you do the same and of course you can use them in your website or as separate applications welcome back so now I'm back with the first type of application which is talking freely with the chatbot so here if I say how are you and click on the send button it's going to respond but if I type anything let's say again how are you how are you and hit enter nothing will happen and we don't want that we want the user to have a better user experience once the user hits the enter button we want to send this text as well so now I'm, I'm hitting this enter button and nothing happens so in order to accomplish that in order to let the user send the message even if they hit the enter on their keyboards we will also add another event listener to this uh, text box so inside main.js what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna give myself here some space and I'm gonna use the text text box dot add event listener and guess what the event listener will not be click it's going to be key press we want to listen for key press any key press on the keyboard we want to listen for it and then function with the event e for event and this is the callback function what we need to do if the user hits or clicks 
on a button. What we need to do, obviously, is that we only need to send the message, we only need to send this message to the chatbot only if the button that the user clicked or hit is the enter button. We don't want to listen for other uh, clicks. We don't want to send this message if the user clicks on another button. And it's very simple to accomplish that. You can use if statement, if, and then e, the event, dot which, and then if it's equal to 13, we are going to send the text. And what that means is that we are listening to key number 13, which is the enter button. So you, you need to remember that 13 is the enter button. If the button that the user clicked on is 13, which is the enter button, let me add here comment. If user hits the enter button on keyboard, which is 13, number 13, then at this point we will send the text. And how are we going to accomplish that? Very, very simple. We can just copy the complete code that was inside the click event, this, only this, and, and I'm going to just paste it inside this if statement. And we are done. Let's now test. If I grab my browser and refresh, Let's now type, how are you? How are you? And if I hit enter, as you can see, the text, the text message has also been sent. If I type again, how are you? But if I hit another, um, another key on my uh, keyboard, nothing will happen. Only if I hit the enter button, it's going to send it. And this is very important because lots of users use the enter button on their keyboards instead of using the send button. And that's in lots of applications and lots of websites and mobile phones as well. Welcome back. If I send a message with lots of spaces, either at the beginning or at the end, so for example here, how are you? And then I add lots of spaces, as you can see, lots of spaces here. And I send, I am going to get, I don't, un I don't understand. Even though the how are you is already inside the array, is already inside the array of possible messages. So why is that? The reason is that the spaces count in this situation, the spaces count. And what's going to happen is that here, if we go to the if we go to the process message it's going to filter the array but it's no it's not going to find a match because the spaces count and it will return i don't understand so how can we fix this actually it's very very simple one function will solve this is by using the trim function so here in the send button at event listener once we get the message using the text box dot value, we can immediately use dot trim. And this is going to remove any space at the beginning or at the end. Now, if I save and refresh, if I add here, if I type, how are you again, and add lots of spaces and then send, and now it's going to recognize this message and it's going to respond with the correct answer, I am great. Because the spaces at the end have been removed using the trim function. And of course you need to do that even if the user uses the uh, key press, the enter key or a keyboard uh, on their keyboard. You need here to type, you need here to use the dot trim and you are good to go. So again here, if I type here lots of spaces and then the message that I want, maybe how are you again, how are you? And if I send, 
it's going to recognize it as a valid message and I'm going to get the correct answer. And of course, again, the more you improve the user experience and the more you are responsive and the more your messages are correct, the better your application will be and your customers will be happy. Welcome back. So far, we have just replied to the user with normal text. But what if we want to reply with a link? How would we do so? Replying with a link would be sometimes helpful and it will make our application more exciting and more advanced. So let's do that. Suppose that the user, for example, is searching for a job and the message would be something, something like find me a job. You can, of course, rephrase it or add many sentences with the same answer, which is going to be a link. So here, response. It's not going to be just a normal text. Instead, I'm going to add a link so that once the user clicks on it, it's going to take him to a page where there are a list of jobs or something like that. So how would we do so? Simply, we use the A tag, which is a link. And inside it, we can here say, click me or click here, click here. And the href is the most important thing. href equals to a link that is going to include a list of jobs. So here it should be HTTP. And for example, indeed.com, which is just a search engine for jobs. And it's going to take the user to this website. And we also need to add a target equals to blank because we want to open this link in another tab. We want to keep the user with our application and we want to open this link in another tab. So let's now save and test. If now I go and refresh and say find me a job and send, as you can see now, it's going to reply with this link, click here. If I click on it, it's going to open this website, which is a search engine for jobs. And now the user can search for jobs. And you can also add a link for a specific type of uh, jobs. For example, engineer. If I search for engineer, and it's going to display jobs, engineering jobs, I can copy this link and instead of just opening the main website, I can here replace this with the uh, with the link, with the link to a specific job, which is uh, engineer or whatever you want. So this would make our application more exciting, more advanced, and would help the user in many other ways as well. Welcome back. We already have a rule that if the length of the message sent by the user is smaller than five characters, we will be saying, we will be responding with please send me a complete sentence. But there are some exceptions for this rule. So for example, if the user types hi and send uh, this message, we need to respond to such, such a message. So if I send hi here, I'm going to get please send me a complete sentence. And again, we don't want that. We can fix this by passing here another condition, which is OR if the message length is greater than OR if the user that message that includes HI, in that case, we need to respond to this message because HI is a valid message in our application. And of course, you can pass as many uh, ORs here as you want, depending upon your application. Now, if I refresh and test with the hi here, hi, and then send, I am going to get hi back from the chatbot because now hi is a valid message. So what we can learn from that is that the process of improving our chatbot is endless. You can always improve your, your chatbot depending upon 
your objective. So there is no limit. Welcome back. So we have already sent a text message and a link. Let's now send something else. So what I'm going to send now is the date. Suppose that the user wants to know the current date, today's date, and I want to display that date to the user. And in order to do so, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to first create a function here, function uh, get date, which is going to just return a specific date format. And the first thing that I'm going to do inside it is that I'm going to just create an object of the date new date and if I just return this date it's going to return everything about the date such as today's date and the month and the year and the hour um, minutes seconds all of uh, this but I don't want to return everything I just want to return a specific format I just want to return the month and the day and maybe the day of the week so in order to do so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to first create few variables first var day equals to date dot get day which is going to return a number uh, of that day and then we also have the month month equals to date dot get month get month and we also have the var day of month and I'm gonna tell you the difference between the day and the day of the month here date date dot get date and the difference is that the day this day will return a number from 0 to 6 where 0 is Sunday and 6 is Saturday so 0 is Sunday and Monday would be 1 Tuesday would be 2 etc and the month will be from 0 to 11 where 0 is January 1 is February 2 is March etc and get date will return a number from 1 to 31 depending upon the day so you have to know all of these and the problem with them as you can see that these will only be numbers not uh, not the day for example it uh, the get date will will not be uh, Monday or Sunday or something like that and get month will not be January or February so we need to convert that to convert these to uh, to strings and the easiest way is to create an array of the months and, and the days and just get each one the corresponding month and the day and it's very very simple you can here create a couple of arrays let's say here var day array and it's going to be equal to first Sunday Sunday and then Monday Tuesday and then we also have Wednesday and Thursday and Friday Friday and finally we have Saturday and make sure that the order is like this because zero would be Sunday so if the get date returns 0 then we, we need to return Sunday so make sure that you have this um, order not don't start with Saturday or don't start with Monday either and we also need another array for the months month array equals to uh, January Jan and February and March and it's going to take some time let me just do it quickly June July and
and as you can see now we have these two arrays and the format that I'm gonna return is going to be the first the day which is going to be day array and then we we get the we pass the day here day so for example if this day if this one was one if the get day was one then it's going to return Monday and we also need we also need here space let's say let's add here space and then comma and then space and then plus we also need the uh, month so if the if it returns one then it will here return February so let me here use the month array and pass the month and finally we have the uh, day let's say here plus and then space and then the day the day we only need the day a format of a number so just I'm gonna just here say day of month that's it and finally I'm gonna return let me now go to the array the array of possible messages and let's add a message so the user might say here might say here message and then today's date and uh, as I told you before you can add as many messages expected messages and respond with the same uh, response because you don't know uh, for sure that the user is going to type today's date maybe the user types something else please give me uh, today's date something like that so you are not sure response and the response will be we only need to get this we only need to get the date so I'm gonna call this function from inside here get get date that's it don't forget to add here a comma let's now save and test if I refresh and type here today's date today's date and send as you can see it's going to return Thursday Jan 2 and as I told you before you can return another format you don't have to stick to this format it's up to you to change the format if you wish so this is another type of message you can add to your uh, array of possible messages you can respond with a function that would return something so the get date is very useful and would add a value to our application welcome back so the fourth application type is going to be a business it could be a restaurant a flight reservation system or a, a hotel something like that so I'm gonna create a restaurant chatbot so initially I'm gonna display the menu to the user and I'm gonna ask the user to choose whatever he or she wants and then I'm gonna ask them for details such as their name and address so that we can deliver food and I'm gonna also ask for payment online or on delivery so what I'm gonna do initially is that I'm gonna display the menu and by the way the business or the restaurant type of application is very similar to the personal assistant because you are going to display a menu or something and you are uh, you are going to ask the user to choose and then once the user chooses something you will respond back that is it so what I'm gonna do is that I am going to first create a function such as the initialize options but it's going to be for the restaurant so I'm gonna create here a function called function and I'm gonna name it show menu and it's going to have pretty much everything just like the initialize options except for the options so here I'm gonna just copy the code and I'm gonna paste it and the only difference is the options the options 
are going to be uh, the menu, the restaurant menu. So here, let's say meal one, meal two, and meal three. Of course, you can customize this and add more meals and drinks, stuff like that, and associate each meal with a number. So that once the user chooses a number, you as the restaurant owner or the business owner, you know which meal or which uh, something the user has chosen. So let's now use the show menu. And of course, the show menu should be displayed immediately after the user opens the chatbot, not on a click event or something like that. So at the beginning of the program or the script, I am going to here just call the uh, show menu. And of course, you can start by welcoming the user by just using the chat but send message and welcome the user. Hi, welcome to whatever restaurant. And let's now save and test. Now we have the uh, browser. And as you can see now, first we have this message, I welcome to whatever restaurant and the menu. We have the menu, meal one, meal two, meal three. And of course, uh, you need to also ask the user to choose. So you can start by saying, please choose a meal. You can also here add um, call, again, call the chatbot, send message, and just say, please choose your meal. Of course, you can encourage the user to choose a number, choose number, so that the user knows that he or she must choose a number. Now, let me just refresh and show you. Now, uh, here, please choose your meal and number. And you can now here type one and send. Welcome back. So now that the user chooses a meal, we need to register that meal and we might need to ask the user again if the user wants another meal or just to check out. So what I'm going to do is that I am going to respond to the user. And in order to respond to the user, you need to add event listener in the send button event add event listener. Here we need to add a function or create a function. So here we can create another function or call another function actually. Call it restaurant respond or response to user. And we can pass the message, which is message text. And we can now create this function. Let's create this function, which is going to be just here function. And the name of the function is restaurant response to user. And it's going to take the message text. And unfortunately, you don't have to create the code again because we already have the code. Remember in the assistant response, we already have the code that will be similar. The code for this restaurant chat app will be similar to this. So I'm going to just copy this code. I'm going to paste it inside the restaurant response to user. And we need obviously to fix few things. First of all, here we need to remove please wait because here we aren't going to call anything, any external service. You can leave it if you wish. And we have choices. Of course, if the user chooses case one means that the user chooses meal one. So let's remove this. And here add just for testing, add an alert that will say you chose meal one. And I'm going to copy it. And for other meals as well, I'm going to paste it. Let's say that we have meal two and meal three.
and of course we need to have a default so that the user if the user chooses anything other than a number maybe the user types a text we need to tell them that they have to choose a number not just a, um, a character or a text so let's now save and refresh and I'm gonna show you now if I choose a meal number one we will have this you chose meal one and this is not enough because we want to register that meal so that we can deliver it to the user and in order to register it remember I previously had here a user object and I told you that um, I am gonna create this object because it's going to be useful later and this object this user object you can use it to store the meals that the user is going to order so here you can create a meals array and it's going to be an empty array and you can add numbers of meal store numbers of meals inside this uh, meals uh, property of the user object and then of course you need to send this to your back end in order to deliver the meal or meals to the user so this is just in the front end and now here once the user chooses a meal we can immediately say or store user.meals dot meals and dot push and we push the number of meal which is which is going to be one at this um, if the user chooses one in case one and it's going to be two in case two here it's going to be two and here it's going to be three and let me now also use the uh, console.log console.log just to log the uh, user object to show you the structure let me just copy it and add it just at the end here and let's now refresh again and let's choose meal number one and let me open the console you will find that in the console you will find that we have an object the user object and it has a meals array and now it has this it has only one element which is one meal one we can also let's choose two it's going to here create another or print another object which has meals and it has two meals one meal number one and meal number two so whenever the user chooses a meal we need to register it and then we can store it in our database so that we deliver this meal to the user welcome back whenever the user chooses a meal we need to be more interactive we, we need to tell the user do you want something else or not we can't just leave the user like this because the, the user will not be able to know what's going on so we need each time the user chooses a meal we need to ask them and encourage them to choose another meal or just to check out so what I'm gonna do is that each time the user chooses a meal and we register it what we need to do is to send another message that is going to say here something else if yes choose meal number number or or 50 to check out and of course we need to add this number here in case the user chooses 50 we can say here case 50 and check out just for testing I'm gonna again use the alert your check out and of course the break break is very important here and instead of the alert what I'm gonna do is that I am going to chat use the chatbot send message function and display the user 
telling the user you chose meal number one and meal number two and meal number three and we also need to do the same for other meals as well so each time the user um, chooses a meal we need to encourage them to choose another meal or to check out and let me now refresh and check that if I type 1 if I choose meal number 1 and send it's going to immediately say you chose meal number 1 and it's also going to encourage me or prompt me to choose another meal something else if yes choose meal number or 50 to check out let's choose another meal meal number 2 and send and here again it's going to tell me you chose meal uh, 2 something else if yes choose meal number or 50 to check out so you need to be specific with the user so that the user knows what to do next and here let's choose 50 or type 50 and send if I do so it's going to here display an alert with the checkout welcome back so after the user chooses the checkout option we need to display the meals that the, that the user has chosen and in order to accomplish that we can simply use the chat bot send message and say here you ordered and then we append the user dot meals now if I save and refresh let me choose only one meal and send and then I choose the checkout option which is 50 and then send as you can see now it's going to say you ordered one which is meal number one and you can say here also meals number and then it's going to display all of the of these meals so here again let's choose meal number two and send and now check out and it's going to display you ordered meals number two and if there are many meals it's going to display all of these numbers welcome back so after the user chooses the checkout option and we display the meals that the user has chosen we need to send them to a page so that they complete the checkout for example we need their information the address the name and the checkout or payment option is it on delivery or online so we can simply after we say that we can simply here say chatbot send message and display here a link please click this link to complete checkout and of course payment should be secure therefore we can't just we can just um, let them pay in a chatbot we need to send them to a secure a web page of our restaurant or a payment system and here you can just display the uh, the link whatever the link you want maybe your link is going to be let's say here at href and your restaurant.com or whatever it is let's say here just for testing google.com just for testing and type here check out let's now save and test if I refresh and choose meal number one and then send and I check out now it's going to tell me please click the this link to complete checkout and we have this link if I click on it it's going to take me to Google 
and of course this link should redirect the user and take the user to payment of your restaurant or your system so that the user can continue payment and you can deliver the meals that they have ordered. Welcome back. In case the user chooses an invalid number, we will display an error. As you can see here, if I choose, let's say, 5, which isn't um, an option, if I click on send, it's going to display, please choose a valid number. And it's also going to encourage me here, please choose a valid number. And even if I type a dummy text and send, it's also going to do the same. So when it comes to typing an invalid number, we have solved this by just asking the user to type a valid number. And we also have these options. And of course, you can add as many cases as you wish. And there must be a checkout option. Welcome back. You might want to display more than just the meal and the number of the meal. You might want to display the price of each meal. And in order to accomplish that, it's very simple. Here, you can adjust the price of each meal in the options array. So here, I'm going to add a new property to each object here. Price. And then you can add the price. Let's say 24. And then add here another price for this meal. Let's say uh, 35. And then for the last meal, we can also add the price. And let's say 44. And you can display them here by just passing the price as well. You can say here plus and then options and then of i and then you call the price. And of course we need space here so I'm going to add another plus and here a space. You can add the uh, dollar sign if you wish. And here, don't forget the plus here as well. And we are done. Let's now save and refresh. As you can see now, we have the price of each meal here displayed to the user. And also, after the user chooses the meal, we want to add the complete object inside the, uh, inside the array. So I'm going to just add this options array outside of the show menu because I want I want it to be a global array so that I can access it in other functions as well. So at the top of the script, I'm going to just add here the options, the options array. And inside the restaurant response to a user, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to push instead of one or two or three, I'm going to push the options of the number. Let's say options one. And here options, options two. And then here options, options three. But there is a problem, which is the uh, array index. The array index will start from zero. So we need to add just an empty uh, object here so that we avoid adding the wrong meal because we will add uh, number one, meal number one, which is this, which is at, at uh, index number one, not index number zero. Index number zero will never be used. So I'm going to just leave, leave it empty, an empty object. So don't forget to add here an empty object. And each time the user chooses a meal, it's going to go to the options array and get that meal which has all of uh, its details, such as the number, the choice, or details about the meal and the price. And then it's going to add it to the meals array. And also here in the show menu, we need to start from one, because as, as I told you, we have an empty meal that we will never use. Now let's save and refresh. As you can see now, we have three meals. Each meal has the price and the details about that meal and the user can choose 
let's choose number one send and we have the meal added to the uh, user meals property if I open the console we should have the meal added here if I open the object we have the meals we have meal number one and uh, the choice meal one and the price is uh, 24 and you can display that to the user if you wish instead of displaying you chose meal number one you can display uh, this meal so now after the user chooses the checkout option it's going to display here the uh, you ordered meals number object object because now we have an object instead of just an array so you can loop through that uh, object that uh, array of objects and uh, display all of these meals or you can just display the total price so I'm gonna just display the total price which is more meaningful and more important so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna create another function called function and then get total price which is just a function that is going to loop through the meals and then get the price and add the price of all meals and then return the total so what I'm gonna do is that here I am going to I'm gonna create a for loop for and then we have let i equals to zero and then and then i smaller than the user dot meals dot length and as long as i is smaller than the uh, user dot meals dot length I need to increase the index and get each meal uh, get uh, the price of each meal so here I'm gonna just use the user dot meals of I and then dot price and I'm gonna store it in here a local variable called let price equals to zero and then here let's name it total price total total price and each time we add a price each time we add the price we add the old price plus the uh, the new meal price so here plus equals and then at the end we just return the total price so here inside the checkout if the user chooses 50 I am going to here comment this out and I'm gonna use again the chat but send message and then I'm gonna say total price and then dollar sign and then what I'm gonna do is that I am going to call the function which is get total price and we are done let me save now and refresh now if I choose meal number one and then meal number two and if I check if I use uh, if I type 50 which is the checkout option and as you can see now it's going to display 59 why because the first meal the first meal price was 24 the second meal was 35 so the total is 59 so here we have the total price display to the user and then the user can check out welcome back as soon as we display the menu to the user we need to create a unique ticket because as you know there will be there might be lots of users who want to buy from us and of course we need to distinguish between each user therefore we need to create a unique number so that you, we know which user ordered which meal therefore what I'm gonna do is that as the user comes to this application to this chatbot what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a unique number and that number can be the timestamps which is a var and then let's say ticket 
equals to new date and then dot get time and this is going to be a unique number so we can store it in the user object so here what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna create a new property called ticket and then I'm gonna store the ticket which is this now if I save and go back and refresh and then choose let's say meal number one and then I check out now let me just pull this and as you can see now we have the total price if I open the console you should find a unique number in the user object if I open the object there is a unique number as you can see ticket and this is a unique number and this number can be used in our backend to distinguish between users because if we have lots of users we need to know which user ordered these meals and by the way you need to create that number only once not each time that the user chooses a meal because the user might choose many meals but it doesn't matter how many meals the user chooses just once they go to our application here we need to just use the get time and get and store it in the ticket and add it to the user object welcome back so the last thing that you need to do is that you need to store the meals and information that the user has sent us in a database and make sure that the user paid and once the user pays then you can deliver the meal and of course in order to accomplish that you will have to have a server-side programming language and store the this this object which is the user object which contains the meals and the ticket these are the most important things the two most important things of course in your checkout here link you will have of course to get the uh, user location and then once the user pays in that link you can deliver the meals because you have the ticket and here once the user clicks on the checkout you can just use the ticket to know that this specific user has ordered these meals so here in the in the uh, case 50 what you need to do here you need to send the meals plus the ticket and plus the the payment payment status meaning that you need to check you need basically to set the payment status to not paid yet so that if the user doesn't pay then you will not deliver the the meals you need to wait for payment and once the user pays then you you can start delivering delivering the meals and to make requests you can just simply use the um, this function which we created before which is going to make a request to your back end you need to have a back end and in order to have a back end you will need to have a server and a database and you can make calls and send the uh, meals as well as the ticket and payment status and if you don't know about this stuff you can hire a back-end developer that will do that for you and of course the payment here is going to be uh, through your checkout link which is going to be this link of course this is this should the uh, this link shouldn't be Google it should be HTTPS and then your your domain or your website payment page your website site payment payment page dot com or whatever whatever your name of your uh, restaurant or payment system so that once the user pays you will know that the user paid and then you can start delivering meals to the user and again that can only be done on the server it cannot be done here because this is a front end code so you can't do that in the front end you need to have a back end programming language such as PHP or Java or Node.js or whatever back end language you are going to use
Welcome back. So now that we have four different chatbot application types, you need to separate each one in a different project folder because each one is different in terms of the objective. So for example, the first application type, which is just to let the user start the conversation and the user will just ask the chatbot several questions and might type different things. This type has its functions and you can just take its functions and its arrays and variables and add them in a different and separate folder. So we have the array of possible messages. You can take this and you can also take its function, which is the process message and add them in a different folder. And there are, by the way, there are common functions such as the send message, the chatbot send message. You need to add these in all your in all of your projects. So that way you will have four different chatbot applications and you can employ them in your websites or as separate applications. Welcome back. So I have separated the code into four different projects, into four different folders, because each one is a completely different project with its objectives. So for example, we have, this is the data collection. I'm now displaying the data collection, as you can see. I only left what is necessary for the data collection chatbot web application to work successfully and function very well. As you can see here, we only have this code. The most important thing is the array, which is questions to ask array. We also have the chatbot send message function and the send message and the ask questions, as well as the send button click event listener and the key press event listener for the text box. And the event listener, these two event listeners, are common for all applications, so you need to leave them in your code for all of these projects. So as you can see now, the code is very clean for the second application, which is the data collection. I did also the same for the general chatbot and for the personal assistant and the restaurant chatbot web applications. So you need to separate the code into four folders because each one is a different is a completely different project. And don't worry about that if you don't know how to do that. I have already done that for you as you can see and I'm gonna upload it for you. But you also need to learn how to do so so that you understand how these things work. I'm gonna also show you the general chatbot. So as you can see this is the uh, this is the general chatbot which has the get date function, the array of possible messages, which is the most important thing. We also have the, the uh, chatbot send message, the send message, the process message function, and the event listeners, the send event listener, the send button event listener, and the key press event listener for the text box. So now, as you can see, the code is very clean for the first application. So now you can download any of these projects and use them. Congratulations on finishing this course. First of all, thanks so much for choosing my course. Secondly, I'd like to encourage you to continue practicing and learning because there is no limit when it comes to learning. Finally, if you liked this course, don't forget to leave a review. Otherwise, leave me messages with your suggestions. This is Most. Thanks so much again, and I'll see you later.